awe helps us to get out of our myopic view to develop humility, understanding that God is God and we are not. We can experience awe by looking outside of ourselves, but also we can experience it by looking inside ourselves. Psalm 8 describes our awe of creation and adds to that awe about humanity when the psalmist wonders, what is humankind that you, God, are mindful of us? Maybe our wants are good in that they help us to notice God and his relationship to us. Our wants point to God's readiness to be mindful of us, that he values hearing from us. Think of something that you want. Whether you get that thing or not, the want itself shows that something that you value. When we hold these things that we value up to God, comparing them with his definition of goodness, we find that there is sometimes a call to look at our desires differently, to adjust them to a more true articulation of what is good. I wrote a poem as I've been reflecting on the value of our wants. It's entitled, I Want. Wanting, yearning, a deep truth down inside, not fully understood. Listen to your wants. Hear the yes to things unfinished. Lean into the lovely longing. Turn to the one who hears and sees all things made whole in time. It's what we do with our wants that matters. Turning to God with the disappointments or the need for patience, or just resting in the awareness that God too wants all things to be made right, draws us into relationship with him. When we acknowledge that God is God and we are not, our desires become a tool God can use to work in the world, in your community, and in your own life. So try this exercise. Hold out your hand. Think of something that you want. Grip in that tight. Value it and name it to God. Then say this proverb aloud. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And then let go. Open your hand and rest that desire in God's hand. Maybe you need to do this many times a day. This is another way that we have awe for God. God develops humility and contentment in us as we turn and return to him.